Hello everybody. Today I want to introduce you to a neat tool I've been learning called CDKates. CDKates is a framework that allows you to define Kubernetes objects in programming languages such as TypeScript or Python instead of having to write YAML or JSON. The tool's website is cdkates.io and from there you can find a link to the project's GitHub repo. On their GitHub you can find more details and documentation and also their TypeScript getting started guide which is more or less what we'll be going through today. So why CDKates? Uh, why is it called that? My best guess is that it's named after another Amazon project called AWS Cloud Development Kit, CDK, that also lets you write TypeScript or Python, but instead of Kubernetes objects, it generates cloud formation to create AWS resources. CDK plus Kates equals CDKates. So how does CDKates work and why would you want to use it? So you write TypeScript or Python, and you get all of the advantages of using a programming language that you're familiar with, like your IDE, type hinting, auto-completion, less context switching, loops and iteration, shareable modules and classes, and testing. All of this can help boost your productivity and prevent you from writing a ton of YAML. CDKates will then take that code you write and generate the corresponding YAML for you, at which point you can then use your standard Kubernetes tools to create those resources inside your Kubernetes cluster. Let me show you an example. To install CDKates and do the TypeScript demo, you're going to need Node, NPM, and kubectl installed, as well as have a Kubernetes cluster that you can use. Firstly, to install CDKates, run npm i-g cdkates-cli. i is short for install, and dash g means globally install it. Then I'm going to make a new directory for this project and cd into it. Now we can use the CDKates CLI to generate a new project. I'll be using TypeScript, so I'm going to type CDKates init TypeScript app. This is going to do a whole bunch of stuff. First, it's going to create all the template files, then, it's going to install all the NPM dependencies, and lastly, it'll actually run through a full CDKates build, which involves running tests, transpiling the TypeScript, and then synthesizing the YAML output. I'm going to open this directory in my editor now so we can explore the files. So if you're a TypeScript developer, a lot of this file structure is going to be really familiar to you. Our TypeScript files, transpiled JS files, and even definition files. Starting from the bottom of the directory, we've got our tsconfig, which you can choose to customize, our package and package lock files, which declare our dependencies and scripts, such as the build script we'll be using later on, some test files, which we won't be getting into today, and then our actual main files, where we'll be defining our resources, Note that right now it's an empty project, and we can confirm no resources are generated yet by looking at the generated output YAML file. Remember that all the resources that you define in TypeScript will be synthesized to YAML and put into this dist directory as output. So before we write some code, one important thing to note is that CDKates by default generates this imports folder, which includes this Kates file that has the type definitions and code for all of the Kubernetes objects that you can generate using CDKates. We're going to need to import that file to get all of our objects. To start, we're going to be doing a really simple Hello World application. All we'll need is a deployment and a service to expose that deployment. So I'll import both deployment and service from the Kates import file. Now I can actually start defining resources. I'm going to rename this class though first to reflect what we're doing with it. And I think I'll also change the name of the uh, chart to from CDKates demo to hello. The name that you pass into the chart will prefix the name of every single resource you create within the chart. And I'll show you that later. So now we can actually start with our resources. Um, I'm going to define a deployment. And uh, that will be our application. And immediately as I start to type this out, you see the benefits of using TypeScript. Um, we get the auto-completion and type hinting from our IDE. And our deployment's going to be pretty simple, so I'm not going to put a whole lot in here. We are just going to do a Hello World application. Um, so we're going to, I don't know, it, I mean, it's Hello World, so we only need like two replicas. So I'll do uh, replicas and set that factor to two. And then for the label, I'm just going to name the app Hello Kates. Then we can define the pod template for this deployment, and we'll use that same exact matching label.
We'll use the same example image that's used in the CDKs docs, Paul Bauer slash hello dash Kubernetes tag 1.7, which is just a basic hello world application that listens on port 8080 and returns a basic web page. So I'm going to uh, type that out here. We're going to name it hello Kubernetes. The image is going to be this Paul Bauer image. And then lastly, we'll define the ports. Like I said, it listens on port 8080. So that's the only port that we're going to need to declare in our definition here. And that's all we need for now. And we can try running a build. I'll clear my output so we can see a little bit better. And then type npm run build. And we get an error. This is TypeScript catching errors for us. Uh, TypeScript doesn't like that I'm importing things and then not using them yet. So uh, I'm just going to go back up to the top of the file and remove the service import so that TypeScript will compile. Once I've got that deleted, now we can retry the build. Here I get a few more errors that have to do with test files. One is an issue with the fact that I renamed the class in the main file, but didn't rename the import in the test file. Secondly, Jest creates snapshots of tests, and you have to recreate those snapshots when you change the expected output of the test. I'm not really diving into tests here, so I'm just going to breeze through these. And then you'll actually see that I'm going to remove the test command from the build command itself inside of the package JSON. This will allow us to run the build. But now that our build command is working, we can see the synthesized output YAML. We've got our deployment object. And note that the name is prefixed with hello, and we named it deployment. And lastly, it's suffixed with a random ID. All of the rest of this YAML matches up one to one with what we had in our TypeScript file. Could we have typed this YAML out by hand? Yes. But would we have gotten the same advantages of types and the language that we're already familiar with? No. So let's deploy this into our cluster now. I'm using a single node local cluster using kind or Kubernetes in Docker, but this will work with any cluster. Once you've applied the deployment file, we should be able to see that we have two pods because our deployment specified a replication factor of two. Unfortunately, we don't have any services yet for this deployment, so we don't have a way of reaching the application from the outside world. Let's fix that. If we go back to our main file, let's now reimport the service object and create a new one. We'll name it service since it will be prefixed with hello anyway, just like the deployment object. And then we can configure the rest of our settings. The service doesn't have to do anything fancy, so we'll just use a basic node port type service that will expose the port uh, at the whole cluster level and forward port 32,000 to the container port 8080, which is the port that our application runs on. Node port requires that port start uh, somewhere up there, I think around at 32,000, so that's what we'll use. Lastly, as I add the selector here, uh, you might have noticed that I've been typing the exact same thing every single time. I'm typing uh, an object, key, app, and then definition, the, the label is hello Kates. Um, we have it three times in this file. So instead, let's refactor that out to be its own variable and then replace it so that we're not hard coding this label every single place inside this file. Yay for variables, another advantage. You can do this with YAML with anchors, but it's a little bit harder to find uh, and figure it out. Uh, it's more familiar when, at least for me, in languages that, I'm, that I already know. So now that we've got that, we can rerun our build. And when we check our output YAML, we should now see our service object alongside our deployment object. The deployment object should still be there, untouched, since we didn't change anything there. But now we should see that there's a service object here uh, matching what we put into our TypeScript. It's forwarding node port 32,000 to port 8080. So let's deploy this and, and see if we can hit our service. I mentioned before that I'm using kind, and I happen to be forwarding local port 8080 to port 32,000 on the kind cluster. So the 
whole map of it is 8080 on my local to 32,000 on the cluster back to port 8080 in the container. It's a little bit complex and your port situation might be different depending on how you set up your cluster and whether or not you're running locally. But now we can hit localhost 8080 and boom, we have our application that we just deployed with CD Cates. You can see we've got the deployment information there and we've got the web page that it returned. And that's more or less a brief intro into CD Cates. You can do even more with it and create reusable classes that embody the best practices of your organization. And you can use Python and probably more languages in the future if TypeScript isn't your jam. But for me, the typing and the advantages of a language that I already know are extremely helpful when creating Kate's resources. I can't really remember all of the options available to me normally, so having them available as type hinting is really useful. And I'll definitely follow this project going forward. Thanks for watching.